you, you see that? It looks kind of nasty, but um, that's exactly what fungal growth looks like. So I actually did try to go and get this, uh, try to fix this lens myself by opening it up and trying to clean the element myself. But the thing is, uh, one of the screws was scripted. I don't know by me or by Sigma. Uh, so at this point, I think it's just better to just send it into Sigma for them to, to do the fixing. Uh, they have professional, they have clean rooms and all that stuff. So I, I trust them. And um, it's gonna cost me some money, maybe a hundred plus dollars, but at least I'm gonna get that lens in perfect condition and uh, they might as well just do a proper deep clean of it at, while, while it's in there. So yeah, uh, I love this lens. I'm gonna actually do a video on it. Just a fun little video in the future once it's fixed, but uh, Okay, so, okay, apologies for that really disgusting looking front element on a lens. That's what you call a fungal infection on a camera lens. It looks absolutely disgusting, I know, and it happened on a pretty expensive lens. It cost me 300 plus dollars to fix, which is not desirable, obviously. And uh, I'm just telling you guys in this video how to prevent it, what to do about it, like what exactly should be your plans to kind of counter your lens becoming a petri dish for fungus to grow. So how this happened actually was because this dry box, which is a completely sealed off box with usually some sort of dehumidifying uh, equipment or agent, there was a spillage of some chemical in there and it was a lot of liquid and there was a lot of humidity in there. And not only was there humidity, there was a bunch of fumes from like the dehumidifying agent that I put in there. And basically it broke down the seals of the lens and basically it made the lens super humid and basically it just gave the lens a chance, it gave fungus a chance to grow on the lens and become you know, make themselves at home. That's not something you absolutely do not want for obvious reasons. The thing about lenses is that they're precise pieces of technology. Anything you put in front of the glass or um, in between the glass, it's gonna affect the way light bounces, the way light travels. It's gonna make your image less sharp, uglier, and frankly, fungus is just plain flat out disgusting on your equipment. And this cost me like a good $300 in the pocket, so that is totally not desirable. So yeah, fungus is a real issue. Sure, if you live in a dry hemisphere, you know, a dry part of the world where the air is really dry, there's not a lot of humidity, then maybe less, it's less of a concern. But for me, I live in the equator. The humidity here is crazy. It's raining, it's all that stuff. You don't want your lenses to be in a humid area like this for long. So how do you prevent it? Well, if you live in a humid place, you're gonna need to find a place to store these lenses where it's dry so that when you're not using them, they're not at risk of becoming the next petri dish for the new species of fungus that you're gonna grow on it. So what you need is something like a dry box. Uh, you know, they sell those and those tend to come with, you know, electronically, electrically powered dehumidifiers. So you plug them in and they go bzzz and they kind of take the moisture out of the air inside the sealed off vacuum box so that it's dry inside. So, but that's a bit pricey, so if you're on a budget, there are other options as well. One option you could use is a use an airtight container like a Tupperware, a lunchbox pretty much to store your stuff like it's airtight container uh, that is reasonably sealed off and then you put in there some dehumidifying agent so silica, charcoal, those kind of things that you put in like bookshelves to prevent worms from growing on the books. All those are po entirely possible and entirely, it's, it's a pretty good idea. So the fundamental idea is that you want a sealed off box and then you want to dry the air out inside with some sort of chemical or some sort of uh, equipment basically and that way your lenses will be stored in a place with dry air. Another option you could do is you know just make sure your room is pretty kind of dry, the place that you store it is pretty dry in general. So my room is pretty dry because year, day in day out the doors and windows are generally closed most of the time and when I'm in this room there's air conditioning on and air conditioning has this effect where it dries the air out so as a result I actually don't kind of keep my lenses in dry box most of the time because my room's air is pretty stale and dry and I'm always using these lenses so it's not a concern it's not really a great idea to store them all the way deep inside a dry box so those are the three options as far as I can tell I'm sure there are other options as well but yeah it's definitely something you want to look into definitely something you want to do because unless you want your lens to become the next biggest biohazard in five kilometer radius, keep your lenses dry and keep them clean. It's gonna save you a bunch of money and it's gonna conserve the image quality, conserve the you know, standard of the lens so that down the road, if you're reselling it, 
you know, people won't check the lens and be like, ew, there's mushrooms on here. I'm not buying it off of you. So yeah. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys found it enjoyable or slightly disgusting. Either way, it's fine. If you did enjoy it, like, subscribe. If you did find it disgusting, like and subscribe. You know the drill, the YouTube drill. Really need your help to boost this channel and algorithm. I'm just a very tiny channel. So hope you guys can help support me. See you guys in the next video. That one's coming tomorrow or the day after. Who knows? Goodbye.